Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. I'm not the biggest nerd in Korea, but I'm a contender, I think. Anyway, this is our budget interesting commanders. This is actually our 25th episode of this already. I cannot believe it's 25. We are looking at the EDH Rec top budget commander. So budget, I call budget is $2 and under. So yeah, very budget. And we're looking at the top token commanders today. This is top five token commanders for under two bucks on EDH Rec. Okay, token theme. If you have seen any of my budget decks, which are lovely, you should check out my budget decks. Yep. Um, <laughs> Self-plugging. Anyway, you will know that my this is my other go-to sub-theme. Uh, last week we covered plus one, plus one counters, and this week it's tokens. These are the things I usually build into like every deck I can, as much as I can, to just get as much value as possible. That is very easy to lead into a win con and things like that as well. So yeah, it's all about getting that additional value. Uh, tokens also simplify combat a lot. If you've got like a flying 1-1 one, one blocker, you just don't have to do a lot of math in your head. You're just like, okay, yeah, block, I don't care. And even, I think that discourages people from even like attacking you or swinging at you. Like there are downsides of course, but combat gets a lot easier for one thing. Uh, it seems like every kindred type has a decent selection of token generators. That is one thing you'll also see with every to I think like I do multiple videos on different uh, kindred types and budget suggestions for those. Another thing you should check out, but um, and go by function, right? So we'll have like a plus one plus one counter video. We'll have a video on like anthems. We'll have a video on token generators. Or we'll have a video on. And yeah, the token generators and plus one plus one counters on every single uh, kindred type has like a whole bunch of those. So yeah, it's a very important uh, sub theme to be aware of in a deck. Please hit like and subscribe. It helps a lot. Um, and I've got a bird outside the window squawking. I hope you don't can't hear that. But yeah, if you can hit like and subscribe, it would help so, so much. Anyway, in the 99, Mirkwood Bats. This is the, I think the newest card. I, not the newest card on this whole list, but the newest card I really like. Um, when I first saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, three and a black for a two, three flyer. Eh, that's okay. Whenever you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses one life. Create or sacrifice. Oh boy, oh, oh boy. I mean, it's in black. I guess maybe that's the one kind of limitation there. If it was red, you could make a lot of treasures and sacrifice them. If it was blue, you'd have a lot of like um, uh, clues to sacrifice. And if it was green, you'd probably have food and sacrifice. So that would go off a lot more. But any kind of, you know, multicolored deck, like I have it in my um, Chatterfang deck. I don't have a lot of food, actually. I keep meaning to put more food production in there. And then, yeah, Mirkwood bat Bats would be just like extra mean because you're sacrificing the food, you're gaining life, and everyone else loses life. Anyway, one dollar. <clears throat> Rose Room Treasurer for three and a red, a four, three. Not too bad. It has Alliance. So Alliance, again, it, it's anytime another creature enters, it does not care if it's token, non-token, whatever anything alliance is so good i did a video on alliance also so yeah whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control create a treasure token if this is the first or second time okay so basically this is going to make two treasures every turn when creatures enter so if you're able to like easily pump out tokens you're going to get two extra mana out of this guy crazy crazy um, and again, these are just treasure tokens. They're not like tap treasure tokens or something. Yeah. Otherwise, you may pay X when you do Rose Room Treasure deals X damage to any target. So as soon as you hit number three, the third creature entering, you can just pay X mana and directly convert that to damage to anything you want. You want to remove that problem creature? Done. You want to like just take a whole like smack someone's life total down? Got it, you got it, it's no problem. 25 cents only, crazy. Hour of Reckoning. This looks bad at first, it's very, very good. 
Four, white, white, white. Okay, the casting cost looks bad. White, white, white. That's like, you get, <clears throat> you're gonna need a... <clears throat> Wait, my throat is giving out today. Yeah, you're gonna need a good amount of setup for that, right? Not so much. Why? Convoke. <sighs> Convoke. Okay, so with Convoke, you can tap any creature and use it to pay you for one mana. And if the creature is the same color, you can tap it as the color mana. So if you've got three white creatures, you can pay the three white with that and then four mana of any color and cast this. Super easy to cast, actually. <clears throat> like, very, very, very ridiculously easy. Destroy all non-token creatures. So if you've got a token deck and no one else does, or even if one other player does, um, still do this and just like, it's almost a one-sided board web, especially if you can combine it with something where you're um, making your own board indestructible, then yeah. Um, I love that combo. I guess that's pretty obvious for everyone. Anyway, 25 cents. Number five, Zena Valley's Voice. Okay, this is a Jeskai Commander. So blue, red, white, three CMC done very fast. Um, as long as you got your mana fixing, I guess. Anyway, for a one, three flyer, and it's Valley's, uh, sorry, Zena Valley's Voice gets plus X plus zero, where X is the number of creatures you control with base power one. That's okay. It's not the ability I would focus on personally. I think you could make a very good deck that does that, but even if you're making a lot of tokens, you're probably doing that by accident, almost. Maybe accident isn't the right word, unintentionally doing that. So um, even just have some kind of equipment with double strike or something like that, which is very accessible in red. So um, you're gonna have options where you don't really need to focus on that a lot to get the value out of it anyway. Creature spells you can cast have Offspring 2. Offspring, I love. Okay, the band, yes, but also the mechanic. I love the mechanic. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it was introduced in Bloomboro, I believe, and I hope they keep using it because it is a really solid mechanic. So let's look at it really quick. You may pay an additional two. So kind of a kicker. If you cast a creature spell, or sorry, as you cast a creature spell, if you do, when that creature enters, and create a, uh, <clears throat> sorry, create a 1-1 one, one token copy of it. So this is going to make a copy of any creature you want for two extra mana. Really what you're doing, you want to like, things with entering effects, things with like, static abilities, or things with like, death triggers. Um, there's, and with this color combination, you've got three colors to work with there, you can really get a lot out of that. Um, 69 cents. <clears throat> oh my gosh, why is my throat... No. <clears throat> Keith Famed Machinist. Okay, so a 1 and Jeskai, blue, red, white. It has, or she has Fabricate 1, so you can put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on her when she enters, or make a 1-1 one, one servo. Other non-token creatures you control have Fabricate 1. So this is gonna make all of your creatures, you can decide, hey, do I want a plus one, plus one counter? Or make a servo. Or I just keep throwing servos onto the battlefield. Um, I'd probably go with the counter, but anyway. For two, and tap, choose one, populate, make a token copy of a, another creature, or proliferate, right? Put an extra counter on anything you want. Again, she gives you the option to either make more tokens or put plus one, plus one counters out. Uh, token and plus one plus one counter synergy, that's great. She is just a powerhouse. Anyway, 50 cents. Akim, the soaring wind, two uh, blue, red, white. Five CMC is getting up there, but I think it's still worth it. Three, four flyer, not bad. <clears throat> for five, maybe not great, but whenever you create one or more tokens for the first time each turn, create a one, one white bird creature token with flying. One extra token per turn doesn't sound amazing. One extra flying token per turn is really good. Again, any blocking you need to do, 
usually the thing you've got to worry about is those flyers coming in just like evasioning you out of uh, the game and you can just block. A lot of flyers often don't have trample as well, so those one ones are going to really count. Um, and for three, Jeskai, again blue, red, white. Token, uh, creature tokens you control gain double strike until end of turn. Just, uh, you can, uh, double strike you can just turn on at any time for all of your tokens. In your token deck, that's going to mean just a pile of power, right? Remember, double strike is first strike and then regular attack. So even if they're getting blocked, you might be able to take out the blockers by getting that first strike. And then your, your token's still alive. The value on that, I think, is hard to... It's situational, I guess, but it's hard to imagine how much big of an impact that can have. Anyway, 53 cents. This next one is the biggest one, and this wasn't on EDH Rex list. It's so weird. Anyway, my son is here. It's uh, Dicey doing uh, Saturday recordings, so if you hear stuff in the background, that's my son. Anyway, Kadrick Soul Kindler. I said that right, yeah. Two and red, white, again, uh, Boros. And the legendary rule doesn't apply to tokens you control. This is the most important thing to get for this commander. If you can start making to token copies even of your legendary creatures, then you can just like swarm with whatever you want, really. You can just start like making, you know, populating. You can start like just getting extra, yeah, extra everything you want and even getting, you know, double, triple triggers on things and things like that. Just way out of hand. Again, if you cast like Rose Room Treasurer, you'll have two of them and he'll be making four extra mana every turn that you make two token creatures or any creature. Four extra mana. For two. Okay, and yeah, I'll get 88 cents for that one. Number four. Marinus Kalgar. Okay, so this one is two white, blue, black. So Esper, five CMCs getting high for a commander. I still think this is pretty good. So he's a three, five with double strike. And whenever one or more uh, tokens enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. That is your card draw sorted for the whole game. Card draw is one of those things where it's like, you need to get it checked off for the deck right off the get-go. Your deck basically doesn't function without enough card draw. And this is like all the card draw you need on your commander. Um, which is really nice to have. Uh, chapter Master. For six, create two, two, two uh, white Asterius. Astari Astaris. It's okay. Oh, thank you, Mason. Anyway, warrior creature tokens with vigilance. Not bad. Again, remember those two twos are going to go come in at the same time, so that is one trigger. You're going to draw one card. You know, getting four power on the board and one card draw for six mana. Six mana is high, but for four combat, you know, four um, attack power and uh, toughness on the board and a card draw. It's not bad. If you think about it as like four mana for four attack power and then on toughness and two mana for a card draw, it's really not bad at all. Anyway, one dollar. Nadir Kraken, one blue blue. I love this card. This is a card I've been wanting to get into a deck for a while, so maybe I should actually get put one a deck together for him. Um, again, one blue blue for two three. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on it and create a one, one blue creature token. So this is gonna, like, you'll draw a card, then you can pay one mana, and then he'll, he'll make a, do the plus one, plus one, and make a token. And when he makes that token, you draw a card and you can pay one mana, and then he'll create a token and get plus one, plus one, and then you draw a card. And this goes, well, not infinite, because you need to put, keep putting mana in, but this really means you can just, like, as much mana as you've got, you can draw that many cards and make that many tokens for one mana. Putting a plus one, plus one counter on a creature, making a one, one creature, and drawing a card for one mana is a good deal. That is a good deal. Anyway, 30 cents only. 
Ultra Marines Honor Guard for three and a white, a two, two, squad two. So every two additional you pay, you can make a copy of this, which is crazy. <clears throat> yeah, anyway, so this is going to stack and stack and stack. Uh, just an amazing card. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one for each one, right? So if you cast it for four, all of your creatures get plus, or all the yeah, other creatures get plus one, plus one. If you make two of them, all other creatures get plus two, plus two, and they get plus one, plus one. They give each other plus one, plus one. And if you cast it for, what, eight, that's getting up there, but you're going to, like, make everything plus three, plus three. Oh my gosh. And they give each other plus two, plus two. Anyway, 78 cents only. Uh, Prince Ir Imrahil, the fair, Imrahil. I should practice saying things. One blue, whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a one one white human soldier creature token. This kind of does the same thing as Nadir Kraken, except it doesn't require mana, right? Even if you get two tokens into the battlefield, you're gonna draw your two cards, even you draw your first card, and then if you make one token, you're gonna draw your second card, and then this is gonna make a token, and then you draw your third card, because you made the token. So yeah, this is gonna be basically free extra card draw and creating a token. 18 cents only. Number three. <clears throat> Caesar. Legion's Emperor, again, he's, uh, so, uh, good old Mardu, I love a Mardu commander. Um, so one red, white, black, again, four CMC, a little bit high, and still not too bad. He is in 4,520 decks, so he is a very, very popular commander, but let's take a look here. He's a 4-4 four, four for five, mm, not great. Whenever you attack, remember, not when he attacks, when you attack. So if you attack with like a 1-1 one, one creature, that counts, okay? It is not he attacks, he doesn't trigger. It doesn't care if he attacks or not. If he does, it triggers. If he doesn't, it can still trigger from something else attacking. Anyway, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, choose two. You get two of these options. Create two one on red and white soldier creature tokens with haste that are tap and, tapped and attacking. So basically just extra attack power. You draw a card and you lose one life. Card draw is always good. And he deals damage equal to the number of creature tokens you control to target opponent. That's just like a win con built into something. Again, you're choosing two of these. So if you wanna you know, lose a life, draw a card, you can do that. If you wanna blow something up and make two tokens, you can do that. And you're going to be doing this thing where you're turning your tokens into direct damage to other players. Like, you kind of don't even really care about attacking, really. You just keep building these, you know, tokens, and then you attack with one, and you can blow up the one you attacked with, and make two, and then just do a whole pile of damage. Crazy. Um, anyway, 99 cents. Okay, and here we got... Bastion of Remembrance. My son's being loud. Oh, good. It's okay. No, thank you. <laughs> okay. He always tells me it's okay when I say he's doing something wrong. Charming. Charming child. Anyway. One of the most important things is to get extra value out of sacking, right? This is kind of like a token sacking combination commander. So it's getting that extra value it is something that's very important. For two and a black, this is an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 white human creature token. Um, sure, soldier, soldier creature token, I guess if it matters. Um, that's okay. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So every time you blow up one of those creatures for your attack trigger, you're uh, automatically gaining life and making them lose another life. Which really just kind of enhances the uh, damage, do, doing damage automatically thing. Easily out of hand. General's Enforcer, so one and a black for a two, three. Not bad. Legendary humans you control have indestructible. The, I love this card. Uh, you do need a lot of legendary humans to make it really worthwhile. 
Here your commander is a legendary human, so that's already a big, you know, a big help. But what you really want is to, like, pack a whole bunch more in. If you're using this, use a lot more legendary humans. Legendary humans are not hard to find. You can find a very wide array of them without a whole lot of hassle. So this is a great budget option also. And for two white black, exile target card from a graveyard. Graveyard hate, love it. If it was a creature card, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. You're not doing this for the token, right? It's not about making token, it's about graveyard hate. It's about like someone has that annoying graveyard recursion thing going on and you just take it out. Again, you don't have to use this on a, on, a, on a creature. You can use this on anything. You get a token if it's a creature, but you can use this on anything. So this is something nice to have in your back pocket. Four mana is not cheap, but it's gonna like sabotage that like cycling thing that, they're, that the recursion player is gonna be doing. Okay, and 25 cents. Finally, Morbid Opportunist. Um, yeah, EDH rat, or EDH on a budget. I always call it the wrong thing. EDH on a budget, uh, another YouTube channel, actually had this recently on a list of cards, to, like basically instead of Phyrexian Arena cards to use. And this is one of my top go-to uh, black cards as well. So yeah, I actually cut it from my list of upgrades with very, very hesitantly. Actually, I cut it because it was in his video. And I just put his video in, in, in the uh, like, a tag for it in the my video. So yeah, you can uh, you can check that out. It's um, it's a solid choice. Anyway, twenty eight cents. Number two, Balin the Haymaker. He is in 4,185 decks, and he is a Naya, Naya business, I said it, I got it in, a red, green, white commander. Uh, Naya is one of my favorite color combinations because I make the really lame Naya business joke, and yeah, so there's that. Anyway, I recently used this in a deck that was a Rayen, uh, legendary deck. Well, it was actually, um, yeah. A multicolor deck is all about having two or more colors. So yeah, a lot of them were legendaries, but anywho. Tap two untapped tokens you control. Sorry, a four three, I should say what he actually is. Four three CMC, four three, not bad. Tap two un untapped legend uh, tokens you control. Add one mana of any color. That's actually really, really good. Yeah, with this color combination, you can make treasure, you can make food, you can make, you know, a lot of tokens easily besides just creature tokens and usually to get something out of them you have to sacrifice them this lets you just tap them and keep them especially like food is kind of based on uh, it, it's getting sacrificed and not being super high value um, so creating a lot of foods is not hard and then you can turn them all into like each two foods into one mana every turn it's it's just very good. Tap three on tap tokens you control. Draw a card. Card draw and mana. Ooh, ramp and card draw are your two like first things on your list. Done. Tap four on tap tokens you control. Put three plus one plus one counters on Balin the Haymaker. It gains trample until end of turn. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. What does it not say? Once per turn or tap. Right? There's no tap. There's there's no tapping him, I mean. You tap the treasure or you tap the tokens. So you can do all of these multiple times per turn. So if you have, let's say, uh, 12 uh, tokens of whatever type, creatures, treasure, food, whatever it may be, if you have 12, which is not hard to do, you could make six mana. You could draw uh, four cards or you could put um, how many would it be? Um, nine plus one plus one counters on the York Commander. Nine by tapping 12 tokens in one turn. Um, that has him at a, what, a 13, 12 already. Uh, he's got red. Very easy to get double strike. There's your win con, right? That's done. Basically, 
he can just like walk in and you know smack someone um use white to give him protection from creatures and then yeah hey commander damage win con sorted right really not hard to do also i like that it's just like synergistic with everything else in the deck because just making tokens is all you need to do to make mana to draw cards to have your win con kind of early game the first two or was it really matter or i guess early game the mana is the most important into mid game card draw and then your win con it just like it covers everything you need to do throughout the game um so so good anyway 112 peregrine two good old peregrine two and a green for a two three if one or more tokens will be created under your control now uh, those tokens plus an additional food are created instead again every time a token is created this will make an extra food so if you make one token it's two that's your mana you're already able to like tap them for mana right um so good so good and also you can sacrifice three food and draw a card probably don't want to do that with balin because balin you can just tap them and draw a card instead right you don't need to sacrifice anything but it's a nice kind of fallback option 52 cents march of the multitudes for x uh green white white convoke we already talked about convoke here convoke and token decks Oh, the synergy. Oh, boy. Create X11 white uh, soldier creature tokens with lifelink. <sighs> with lifelink also. Um, Just crazy. And you're going to be able to just turn around and like the next turn. I assume you wouldn't be able to... to uh, could you tap them that turn? I guess probably you could because it would be Balin tapping them, right? I'm not sure. I would need, want to check that, actually. But, yeah. You'd be able to tap them for every two. It's creating one mana forever after that. Or whatever else you want to do. If you want to secure your win con. If you want to just draw a bunch of cards. Yeah, you've got options. Like, especially with Convoke. Where you can tap your creatures to pay for the cost as well. Um, crazy good. Anyway, 75 cents. Wildfire Awakener, X1, uh, Red White, Convoke again. This one makes those to makes one one Red Elemental creature tokens with whenever this becomes tapped, it deals one damage to target player. So you can just tap these and get your card draw, get your mana, get your plus one counters on bait on your commander. And tapping them is just going to automatically deal one damage to target player. So you can like be tapping for your win con and also like lowering their health at the same time. Or someone else's health. I guess it should be someone else's if you're going for a commander damage win con. Drain someone else out. Um, just super useful. Anyway, 147 only. Number one. Okay. We've got the creepy doll, and I've got my Chucky shirt. So yeah, I've got my creepy doll shirt to match the, the creepy doll number one. Um, I really like this shirt. I got it in Canada when I was there in August. It has a big Chucky on the back. It's like the friendly starting Chucky though. So yeah, it's the, what is it, little buddy or something? Anyway, yeah. Arabella Abandoned Doll. Okay, this is uh, from a very new one from Deskmorn. I actually pulled this in my Deskmorn opening and I was pumped because this is on my list of like favorite budget cards, my top picks there. Dex 998. Again, very new, low deck count. So she is a red and a white Boros for a 1 3. Whenever uh, she attacks, it it deals X damage to each opponent and you gain X life. X damage to each opponent. Each. And you got life gain. Uh, where X is the number of creatures you control with power 2 or less. So this isn't really focused on tokens. You don't need tokens necessarily. It, tokens are very easy to make 1-1s one, or 2-2s. Two, and it's going to count all of those as like direct damage to each opponent. 
That's insane. So even if you have like five tokens, which is, you can do that by accident, really. When she attacks, automatically five damage to each opponent. So 15 damage going up and you gain five life. So you got so many things to build around here. You've got kind of like non-combat damage. In, with red, you can boost that up just very easily. You've got life gain with white. You can get all kind of additional effects from that. So there's a, just a lot of very easy ways to build this that are like very, very useful. And I also like that. It's like Boros, a lot of times you got those like big creatures or equipment decks or something like that. This Boros is not really known for its like token decks, right? A bunch of little guy decks. Like not really doing a swarm usually with like Boros is not commonly associated with that. So I think it's an unusual kind of build for the command or for the um, color identity. There you go. There's the word, the term. And we 49 cents. Ragged Playmate. Here's another one I got to order, even just because of the art. One in red for a 2 2. Pay one mana and tap. Target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. I probably. Actually, I think I misread that. I thought it was creatures with power two or less. Um, there are. There's a goblin that can do that. Actually, there's two goblins that can do that without paying the mana. So, um, yeah. See, those are probably better. I gotta read more carefully. I was doing this last night. I think it was late. I got. I was getting tired. My brain stops working. Anyway, impact tremors for one and a red enchantment. One and a red for this enchantment is just so cheap. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, impact tremors deals one damage to each opponent. Auto damage. Building around auto damage. First of all, with red. This is great, and you're basically, you're making one ones, and if they're one, a bunch of one ones, they each do one damage automatically when they enter. It's like it is successful attack with them. Anyway, 109, Well of Lost Dreams. So this is building off the, kind of the other side of it, the life gain. For a four, it's an artifact. When you gain life, you may pay X, uh, where X is less than or equal to the amount of life you gained. If you do draw X cards, you could potentially just, every time you attack, you know, you count how many tokens there are. Each opponent takes that much damage. You gain that much life, you draw that many cards by spending the mana. One mana for one card draw, especially one colorless mana for one card draw, is a very, very good deal. That is nothing to sneeze at. That's very good. Anyway, 55 cents. The list. All right. Uh, Zina Valley's voice, sixty-nine cents. Uh, Mar Marinus, Marinus Calgar, one dollar. Caesar Legion's Emperor, ninety-nine cents. Balin the Haymaker, one twelve. Arabella Abandoned Doll, forty-nine cents. I already got one of these. I should order more because I think they're going up. Anyway, take it easy.